Man, so close. That is going to be difficult for me. Uh, fatigue, exhaustion, desperation, anguish. These are all words that describe my trip to Baricutin, the volcano in the state of Michoacan, Mexico. Now, Paricutin is the name of the volcano, but San Juan Viejo was the name of the city that this volcano destroyed back in 1943. Fortunately, there were no casualties in the state of San Juan. Everybody evacuated in time. More than, there was two villages that were destroyed and more than 600 people luckily evacuated. That's not to say that Paricutin, years later, didn't try to kill Moa. It was everything that I've mentioned before. Uh, desperation. No, it wasn't Joe versus the volcano, but um, yeah, it, it got me pretty good. But we're going to back up a little bit because I want to talk to you about the way it got started, the whole adventure leading up to that point, and how I escaped the volcano of Paracutin. You all remember Lily, the family dog. Lily started this whole thing. My sister Idalia, who you also know from previous videos, walks Lily daily using the same path and they encounter an old lady who sits in the same spot every day to watch all the passers-by. So obviously they strike up a conversation and Idalia informs me that Maria is from Michoacan but San Juan Nuevo, not Viejo. So after a little investigating, I learned the story the history of San Juan Viejo and how it was consumed by this volcano and it caught my interest and I knew I had to go. So here I am. It's two days later after the hike and I'm about to share with you how it all got started, how I went about this, this journey and I hope you enjoy it. So it all started with a farmer. Uh, what was the farmer's name? His name was Dionisio Pulido. He had cornfields that he worked every single day. And this one day, the ground started to swell. It started to heave, it broke open, and ash and smoke started to spew out. Within a day, this ash settled, made a cone that was 40 feet high. Within a week, the cone grew to 500 feet high. It was a new volcano. It's the newest volcano in the Western Hemisphere. Eventually, this volcano grew to 1,200 feet high after a year. It was quite the event. They were scientists that came from all over the world. Now this volcano, fortunately, is considered to be monogenetic. That's a new term that I hadn't known before, which means a volcano will create a vent and erupts and then moves on to a different location for a new eruption. They never vent twice in the same location. So this volcano is pretty much dormant. So I hired a tour guide for the day. We headed out early in the morning from the city of Uruapan. That's where the, uh, my hotel was. That's where the airport I landed was in the state of Michoacan. This uh, taxi or colectivo took us to a little town called Angajuan. Angajuan is about an hour away. And the colectivo dropped us off at the edge of town. And my guide and I had to walk through the town of Angajuan. I would advise that your ride, whether it's you rent a car or you are driven there, drive through the town of Angajuan to the side of the volcano so you don't have to walk the, the whole length of the town. But in a way, I'm kind of glad I did because it is such a cultural experience, this town. These people are still considered to be very, very native. A lot of them don't even speak Spanish. A lot of them speak, oh, I forget the name. But listening to this recording, listening to this video, there is a vendor who's selling products, fruits, vegetables in this language. And I'll post the name of the language um, in the video. So check this out. <laughs> What language is that? Wow. If you do decide to go here someday to climb this volcano, 
don't miss the opportunity to, to buy uh, snacks, enough water to last you because you'll be making a journey. My journey was 16 miles hiking, and that's the most I've ever walked uh, on a single day. So um, yeah, I was quite taxed. The Colectivo left us at the edge of town, so you actually have to walk yourself um, to this area. This costs us 15 pesos uh, for myself to get in, and it's set up very nice because there is a restaurant here, and there's little uh, casitas, what would you call them, Jesus? Uh, cabanas. cabanas. So on your way back from the volcano, if you need a shower, or can you sleep here too? Yes, sir. Yeah. And you can park in this area, which is the staging area for the hike to uh, San Juan Viejo. San Juan Viejo, yeah. Which is where we're headed right now, so stay tuned. ¿Qué pasó? Ok, adiós. This little guy here, we picked up in Angahuan and he followed us all the way to the church. Hey. <laughs> Look what you did to my shorts, you're all dirty. He knew the way to go and he's telling us, come on, let's go, I've done this a million times. I'm gonna have to give you a name. Uh -oh. Dasher. The first thing that you visit is the church. This city of San Juan, since it was built out of wood, the entire city was destroyed except for their church, which was built by the Spaniards. The name of the church, I cannot pronounce. I'm gonna post that for you. The church was built in 1618, I believe. The facade um, survived and the altar survived. You know, this lava traveled five to six miles. It wiped out two towns, but this structure still stands and it is becoming a tourist attraction. So getting here was amazing. amazing. So this is uh, San Juan Viejo uh, rebuilt. Yeah. So 30 minute walk and you have a restaurant here. Yeah. So you can have, enjoy some breakfast or whatever you like very convenient and the church is right here nice setup follow the dog follow the dog After watching so many videos on YouTube and researching this, this area, it's kind of it's a surprising feeling for me to actually be here myself.
Okay, here's a, another update. So we've gone past the, the lava rocks and now we're on a path, a pretty even, easy to walk path. We're going up to the top of the, vol the I keep saying volcan because that's how you say volcano in Spanish. I hope these old legs will make it. We did lose the, our little perrito friend. There's another family that came, they had a dog and we, we're now abandoned. How do you say abandoned? Abandonado? Abandonado. Uh -huh. Triste. Triste, sí. Si. Ab abandonado. Muy triste. Okay, we are here. We are going there. You see that peak? That is Parcutin. Oh. People actually do live out here. Yeah. When one dog abandons us, another one joins in. Yeah. This old guy's more mature, I think. Yeah. Now we've been walking for one hour. And what I find interesting is we're on this path. Sometimes it's a powder sand sometimes it's rock but it's dividing the lava is on this side which is where the lava stopped and on this side is fertile ground where they're growing avocados so just the territory it, it just amazes me so we have two hours more to walk mm -hmm. I, I hope that the next uh, edition here is not me on a in an ambulance <laughs> but we'll see. Helicopter. <laughs> Helicopter. Medevac. This is the only sign that we've seen this whole journey. Alright, here we are. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah, it's good here. Okay. We just have a short distance to get to the top of this volcano, but I think this volcano has kicked my ass. <laughs> it can claim victory over me. I don't think I'm going to make it to the top. In fact, I don't know if I want to make it walking all the way the three hours or more uh, back. So, uh, we're taking a rest here. We have plenty of water. We have our companion, the dog. He's he's pretty tired as well. But um, I'll check back in about a half hour and see what the status is. But right now, I'm I'm defeated. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> Now, fortunately for me, I did not die at the base of Paricutin Volcano. Yes, we had arrived at the base where a couple of the horseback riders had gotten all the way to the top. They had, had descended down. By the way, that is a, a feature that the young people are enjoying. Once you get to the top, you don't have to come back around the path. You come straight down on the volcanic sand it's, uh, I guess, quite an adventure. But once they got down to the bottom, it was a young man and um, well, it looked like a mid-20s, mid-30s uh, young man. And it turns out the young boy, who was 11, I believe, was the owner of the horses. This other guy was just a tourist like me, and he was from Mexico City, smarter than I was, uh, smarter knowing that you take a horse to this spot and you walk the rest of the way. So my tour guide had, had a conversation with him and this young man said, I will walk, he can have my horse. Yeah. So I did pay him, um, probably more than I had to. I paid him a sort of a king's ransom. He was very happy about it. But this little, this boy saved my, you know what? There's no way I could have walked back. No way. When I come back, 
and attempt this again, hopefully soon, and I'm not so much older, is get here a few days beforehand and acclimate yourself to the altitude. I, I think it would have helped me a bit. My muscles would have worked much better if uh, I was, uh, you know, naturally acclimated. I would consider renting a horse. There are so many, you have so many opportunities to rent a horse. Many people there offering that service. Yes, you're going to be in the saddle for hours, but in the 60s, in your 60s, you you may have other conditions. You may have other things that you must be mindful of. Uh, it's best to have a sore butt than something something else go wrong while you're out there in the forest. We could have rode a horse the entire way, and the horse obviously cannot go up the steep inclines of the volcano, but that's where your walking would have started. That's where my walking would have started, and I did not get to the top of, of the volcano, and that um, frustrates me. And if you are around my age, or if you're not in top condition, hire a horse and its guide, because these guides know exactly where to go. My guide was from Uruapan. Um, we got lost a couple times, which added extra steps on these old weary legs. I consider myself in pretty good shape. There was no way I was going to be able to go up one more incline. Physically, I could not do it. Well, at this stage of this video, I'm thinking it might be a little anticlimactic. Um, I didn't end it stretched out on a gurney. I didn't get myself lost in the forest or the woods, which I, I'm pretty capable of doing that. Heck, you saw me. I had to get myself saved by an 11 year old. <laughs> I don't know if you, if you like this video, I might, there's still time. I might go out and get myself arrested or something. Yeah, no, I'm a pretty boring guy, but hey, that's not stopping you from getting out there and making your own travels timeless. So. Until next video, this is Andy from the Timeless Travel Club. Get out there.